Hey everyone, this is Nina, and today we're gonna show you how to create a cover for your business page on Facebook. So we're gonna teach you how to create your video cover or how to create a regular, just photo cover for your Facebook. And we're gonna be using Canva to do it. It's gonna be super duper easy. However, this video is created for the not so techie entrepreneur who really wants to learn how to use these apps. So it will be extremely detailed. If you want to jump from spot to spot and just get straight to it, there will be timestamps below. However, I highly suggest you watch the entire video, even if you know Canva, because I usually give you little hacks and tips and tricks and shortcuts that help you. And they're tips that, you know, I create. So it's, you're not gonna hear anywhere else. Let's get into the video. If you have any other questions, make sure and comment below. If you happen to like this video, make sure you like it and let YouTube know, hey, I like her videos, show me more. All right, let's go. Okay, so you think that we start in Canva, but really where I wanna start is on Facebook. Just in case you didn't know, Facebook has a help center. It's facebook.com slash help. The reason we're starting here is because Facebook changes the dimension of their covers a lot. And so I always go to their help to see what the current dimensions are. So this is 1640 by 856. These PX stands for pixels. So it's just how many little squares across by squares down. Now, one of the things, I'm just gonna copy this and put it in a notebook. One of the things that you wanna know is that there is a safe space, and this is with any social media platform, whether it's Facebook, YouTube, there's always some space. I'm just gonna show you an example. This is my brand marketing squad. It's a private group for those that are members of a membership that I just started this month. So anyways, um, if you look, it's brand marketing squad. There's some information here. There's usually an edit button. There might be some things up here. And remember, your cover also has to match on your phone or be able to fit on your phone. So what happens with this is it tells you what the safe space is. So rather than trying to recreate the dimensions and figure it out, I just save this image locally. And I've already done this here, but you just right click and save. And then when we start the design, I'll show you how that's gonna come in handy. All right, but for now, let's get to designing. All right, so I'm gonna take those dimensions that were given to me and go to create and then custom size. By the way, if you are new to Canva and haven't used Canva before, go ahead and go to sociallynina.com slash Canva. That's my affiliate link and you can sign up for a free trial of the pro account. That's gonna give you a lot more features and some of the features I'm gonna go over today are from the pro account. All right, so these are the dimensions and make sure it says pixels, not inches or anything else. And we're gonna click on create new design. Now, for those of you that are used to creating designs, you're used to selecting Facebook cover or Facebook group cover, don't worry, we'll have those templates for you. But custom designs, just, just make sure that you have the right size according to Facebook. So here's what we're gonna do. It automatically starts on templates that fit this size. But we want to make sure that it's good for our Facebook cover. So before we go back to Canva, let me just show you a couple of things. When you create your group cover, you're going to want to include some kind of picture or icon. Usually I would put my profile picture here, but this is a private group. The name of the group, who it's for, and then I always put a click here because for those of the people that find your group, this isn't even, it's not a real button, but on the right hand side, you can put information, including a link to join. So those are the elements I'm going to make sure and include in our graphic. All right, back to the design. So you can browse through here to see if you have, in fact, this one has a button already that you can use right but what i usually do is you can type in whatever it is that you're looking for like facebook cover now for us we're looking for a facebook group cover so i'm going to put that in 
Now, if you want it to be like minimal or bold or whatever it is, you can select whatever one fits exactly what you're looking for, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead and look for, there's one that I saw earlier that gives you a good start. Okay, I'm gonna use Meet the Kittens because it has nothing to do with what I want to design, right? And I wanna show you that you can start with anything as long as it has the elements you want. Now remember, we have certain spaces that we want to avoid. So what I would do is upload, and I've already done this, but you can upload the template that we had from Facebook. Remember we saved it just to make sure we stay out of those areas, right? So I'm going to actually put this over it a little bit later. I'm going to do some designing and then I'll bring this in a little bit later, but I want to make sure you know that at any time you can include this and just make it semi-transparent just to make sure you're within the guidelines. All right, I'll go ahead and delete that for now. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna replace this cat with a photo of myself. Now, I've already uploaded my brand photos. If you haven't checked out my video on how to set up your Canva Pro, I'll include that link below, but I upload all of my photos, my brand colors, all of my styles, everything is in here. And we'll get back to that in just a second. So there's a couple ways that you can include pictures. Now, if you have a picture like this with the background, you can remove the background or you can use a photo frame. So let's go to elements and we're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom where you see frames. Now there's different frames and grids where you can add photos in there, right? Depending on um, what your photo is. So a lot of times if you don't have a photo that has enough space or maybe it has too much in the background, you don't wanna remove it, you just wanna add something here. So I can do something like this. And this is just a photo frame that I can drag in here. I'm gonna leave the cat for now just to show where the spacing could be, right? I'm just gonna leave it for now. And then I'm gonna go over to my photos and if I want, I can drag over something like this. And I double clicked. When you double click, you can move it. Anytime you see these four arrows, you're moving it. Anytime you see the two arrows, you are resizing it. So I can resize it as well. All right, and then that would be my photo. I can also flip it if I want it to flip the other way. Now, for my photo, I actually want to remove the background on a photo I already have. I'm gonna use this photo, move it over here. Now, anytime you have something cut off, like your limbs are cut off, you don't want it to just be floating. So I'm gonna make sure this is flush with the bottom so it doesn't look like my legs are floating. Since I have Pro, I'm gonna click on Edit Image and I am going to remove the background. Now, this does a pretty good job. As you can see, I have curly natural hair, so a lot of the apps don't get the hair correct, but if you look, most of the time, Canva's pretty good about going around my curls. Now, given this is a very plain white background, but it's pretty good. Now, one of the things to keep in mind, anytime you're looking at something, you wanna be looking at the text or pointing at the text, so you don't want this to be this way, right? And the text is over here. So keep in mind, you can always flip it, but your eyes should always be looking at the text. So I may resize it just a little bit. So I'm looking at the text and not out into nothing. All right, now I'm gonna click on apply. And actually what I can do, I'm gonna, I am going to, I just, I see an issue. So I'm gonna control Z. That's just to undo it. And I'll show you where the mistake was. And actually, okay, so if you see part of the chair is gone, so you may want to, on the right hand side, I'm just gonna zoom in before I click on apply. I'm gonna click on restore, and I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller, actually a lot big smaller. And then I'm just going to kind of draw this back so it doesn't look awkward, okay? And so I'm gonna spare you the details and I'll come back. All right, it doesn't have to be perfect. I just went over here and put it back and I'm going to zoom back out and then I will click on apply or done. Done and then apply. And now it looks a lot better. 
All right, I'm just gonna make this sure this is here. Now, the next thing that I want to do is up upload or add my um, template just to make sure that I stay in the range while I am doing this. Now, one thing that I would do is send this all the way to the back so it doesn't interrupt your editing and then I would make it semi-transparent. We don't want to necessarily see everything, just enough to make sure we stay within the lines for designing. So if I just click on send backward, it's just going to go back one step and this is going to be in front. So I want to send it to back. That means all the way to the back. Now it won't bother me and I can always go back and delete it later. All right, so now I'm not gonna worry about the fonts. I'm not gonna worry about the colors because it's gonna be super du duper easy at the end. And I'll show you why when we get to that part. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and add a couple of additional items. But before I do that, notice I can't click in the background. So what I'm gonna do is crop. It's already on crop. I can tell because of these lines, but if not, you can always click on crop but I'm gonna crop this so I can select items around it without all of the extra stuff, okay? So that gives me all this space. And now it's cropped because I didn't need all of the extra space. All right, so I don't need these. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. And we're gonna do, our group is going to be about martinis and mimosas. Okay, and actually I like it like this better. Let's do this. I like the longer ones. That, nope. Okay, martinis and mimosas. We'll fix this a little bit later. All right, and so down here, we're gonna just say what the group is about. It's gonna say a group for mixing it up, or mixing up the best drinks. Now remember, I do want a click here button. So I'm gonna go back to elements and we're gonna look for button. And it's gonna show me my recently used ones. Now here's the trick. Anytime you add any type of graphics to this, you wanna make sure it's something that allows you to change the colors. So this is a recent button that I use, but let me just show you. So I'm gonna click on, I'm gonna show button. I don't want photos of button, I want graphics. So if I use this one, if I look here, I can change the colors, right? To whatever brand colors I have. Now, some of these don't give that option. So let's see if this one, this one doesn't. So it's always gonna be gold and black. So I always look for graphics where I can change the color. So I'm gonna leave this here. And we just wanna make sure it's not down here. We're gonna put this somewhere over here. Now, one of the things I wanted to bring out before I add the text to the button is that if you send up your brand kit, all of your fonts are here. So I'm gonna use just the font that I have. So I'm gonna say click here to join. Now remember, this isn't gonna be an actual button in the group, but it will enlarge and give text where they can click on it. In this case, I am gonna change the color to white just so I can see it on the button. Not really worried about the font right now, just making sure that it looks nice. If you want, you can group them. So I'm gonna click on this one and I'm just gonna actually just select, and let me just move this. I'm just gonna highlight these two, right click and group. What that allows you to do, I'm gonna put this back. What this allows you to do is now resize them as one. So wherever you move them, they are now together. Now see the pink line on the right hand side? That is kind of your space to show that it's aligned with these. So you wanna make sure, you know, that you have your alignment correct, okay? So let's add some martini glasses. Again, we are going to make sure that we can change the colors, right? So I'm gonna add a martini glass over here and we can change it to graphics to make sure. And I think I like these better, so I'm gonna delete these. I am gonna include a photo or a graphic that you can't change the color just so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'll worry about this placement a little bit later. 
For now, I'll just send backwards. I just want it to be behind my hair. I'm gonna add this. I obviously can't change the colors here. So I'm just gonna add this just so you all can see what happens. And then I'm gonna add a mimosa. I'm gonna click on it just to make sure I can change the colors. I can. So I'm gonna put this on this side, resize it. Now at one point you would have to make sure it's kind of in the middle because for mobile phones, it would cut it off on the edges, but that no longer happens. You don't have to worry about that. And actually I want this to be a little faded. Okay, so we have everything that we need. I can remove, I can remove this background now, the little template that I had. I'm just gonna click on delete. And now I can see my full photo. I know that it's gonna fit on my Facebook cover. Now, here's the thing. This is not my, these are not my brand colors, right? So I'm just gonna go to styles. If you have not set up your font colors or anything like that, you can select colors, you can select fonts here, um, or there's sets that kind of match. So I can just go through. This is why we use these files or graphics that have, they're called vectors. The colors are changing automatically and I can just kind of scroll through them, except for this one, because it's not in the vector family, right? So here we can go through and see what colors that we have. In my case, since I set up my pro, I can apply my color, my brand colors, as well as my fonts. And I can just keep on shuffling through them I actually really like that. You can shuffle through them until you like it. And you can do that with each of these. I think I'm gonna change the font to something more flirty. So I'm gonna click on this. Mimosa. So I actually like that, but you can't really read it. And so you just go through until you find something that you like. You can go back and, you know, fit it the way you want um, or put it, you know, enter or put it into two lines. But the goal here is to find something that fits what you're talking about. So I'm just going through and trying different things. I actually like this. So let's do this and then you can, I'm just gonna move this over here and you can increase the font here. Now we're actually done with our graphic and I don't want just that, so let's do this. We're done with our graphic, but just a tip about downloading. So sometimes these templates will have something like animation and things like that. We don't need animation because it's not gonna work on your cover. But when you download it, just make sure that you download it. You can do PNG or JPEG. JPEG is a, a smaller file size, but you can use PNG. And then you just download it and upload it to your Facebook group. So, okay, so we're actually finished with our thumbnail. How did we do? I really, really like it. I probably would make this text a little bit larger just so I can see it. But besides that, I absolutely love this. It's very minimalistic. But, you know, there's different ways you can be creative. Just make sure you include the information you need, right? So as you go through, if you need tips and tricks on how to grow your group, how to set up your group, how to use communities to generate leads, make sure and head over to brandmarketingsquad.com. Now this is a private membership. I just started it this month. I know I've had different memberships in the past and programs that I've worked with a ton of clients, but this is one that really encompasses what my audience wants. So anything from building a brand, there's a lot of information on here, but building a brand and brand strategies, content creation or content marketing strategies, and also video marketing strategies. I have videos on how to set up your YouTube channel, how to record videos, how to find you know keywords, create thumbnails, all of those kind of things. So if you are a new business and you're looking to start creating your brand, head over to brandmarketingsquad.com. You can try it out. If you don't like it, you can cancel anytime. Ciao for now.